Writer Oscar Wilde wrote that life imitates art far more than art imitates life. That basically means that art affects the way we look at the world around us. And for Samuel H. Cress, founder of S.H. Cress Five and Dime and the Cress Foundation, art shaped him immeasurably. And because of that influence, his legacy in the magnificent stores he built and the art collection he donated, our country today is enriched. His influence is woven into the fabric of so many of our city's architectural landscapes and cherished museums. Cress was born and raised in Pennsylvania. His father, like so many other retail founders, was a retail merchant. Cress's path to opening his store had a few detours. He worked in a rock quarry for a bit, and then at age 17, he became a teacher. In 1887, now in his early 20s, Cress took his meager teacher's savings and opened up a shop selling stationery in Pennsylvania. His success allowed him to open additional stores that he called S.H. Cress & Co. Instead of heading to large urban areas to launch a store, Cress focused on smaller cities in 29 states that had growth potential. This strategy ultimately was a two-pronged success story. One, the Crest Five and Dime was a coveted treasure in cities across the country because there was nothing else like it. And two, Crest made a fortune. By the mid-1920s, Crest lived in a penthouse on Fifth Avenue in New York City, right across from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. The Crest Five and Dimes weren't the largest chain of variety stores in the country, but it was one of the 20th century's most prosperous ones. Cress's had the highest per store sales of any five and dime stores for more than 20 years. The stores offered affordable, durable, and cheerful domestic merchandise. Basically, they offered a complete stock of everyday necessities. But this was the age of five and dimes, and Cress wanted his stores to be a little different from his competitors in order to stand out. And he found that angle, so to speak, in the architecture of the buildings themselves. He wanted his stores to be works of art, to become a jewel in a city's fabric, not just from what the inside of the store offered, but the aesthetic of the facade too. And so he hired staff architects to build beautiful buildings in multiple styles. Over 200 of them actually, from New York to Hawaii. Some were built in Greco-Roman style, others in Gothic Revival. But perhaps the most iconic ones are the more than 50 Art Deco creations by architect Edward F. Sibbert. Curved glass windows and huge bronze doors segued into marble interiors featuring fine woods, custom counters, and hanging lamps. Shopping here was an experience, complete with well-appointed retiring rooms and the basement soda fountains. And the crown jewel of them all was the flagship store in New York City. This Cress Emporium was a seven-storied marble masterpiece. It was even awarded a gold medal for architectural quality. As the popularity of the Five and Dime store faded with the next generation, the company was sold in 1964, with various closings and liquidations happening over the next 15 years. McCrory stores bought the remaining locations in 1981 and continued to operate the stores under the Crest name until going out of business in 2001. Sadly, some of the Crest stores were torn down, including that gorgeous flagship location in New York City. It was demolished in 1980. But the Crest buildings that remain are today heralded as city landmarks, an essential part of a city's landscape. Some even have received the distinction of being national historic landmarks. 
Take, for instance, the old Crest Building in Memphis, Tennessee. This 1927 building is now part of Marriott's Spring Hill Suites and is used for meeting spaces. Other stores have been renovated into condos, like the Nashville and Baton Rouge locations. The Birmingham, Alabama store, circa 1937, today houses a prominent law firm and also serves as an upscale venue site. The Meridian, Mississippi store, is now part of Mississippi State's Meridian campus. And the long list continues. Texas, Georgia, Missouri, North Carolina, and California, just to name a few. These stunning architectural gems are now home to businesses, restaurants, stores, and antique shops. Many also contain the arts. There's a bookstore in one. One is a music venue. Another, a children's museum. One is a theater, and one showcases art. And that brings us back to art. Sam Crest loved art. Perhaps it was the time he spent working in the rock quarry, developing his appreciation for stone. Or maybe it was his years in the classroom, teaching literature and art and history. Or maybe it was his easy access to the Met in New York. Whatever the reason, Cress used his fortune to acquire a massive art collection. In 1929, at the age of 65, he established his foundation, the Cress Foundation. During the Great Depression, Cress wanted to bring beauty to a struggling public. He sponsored a touring art exhibit through 25 U.S. cities, featuring 55 pieces of art from his private collection. He also gifted many art museums across the country with pieces from his collection, many of which went to the smaller cities that helped to make his fortune in the first place. Many of his donations, over 700 of them, were of the old masters who could grace the walls of smaller museums who could otherwise never have afforded such valuable paintings. Over 200 paintings were split between 23 colleges and universities to establish their collections. Cress made a large gift to the people of the United States, accepted by President Roosevelt in person. This gift started the National Gallery of Art. When it opened in Washington, D.C. in 1941, nearly three quarters of the works were donated or loaned by Cress. His foundation continues to devote resources to the appreciation, preservation, and teaching of art through its support and grants and fellowships today. Cress strongly believed that to whom much is given, much is required. He used the tremendous wealth he earned in his five and dime stores, which were a beloved piece of Americana, to leave a lasting legacy of beauty and inspiration to the generations that followed in his spectacular buildings and his stunning works of art. Thanks for watching Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit the thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana. Thank you.